microbiologist, and I study germs. Germs are microorganisms, bacteria, molds, and viruses, and they are all around us. They're in your chairs, they're in the air we breathe, and they're on our skin. <laughs> I got your attention. And every time we shake hands, push a shopping cart, or go to the gym, we interact and spread those germs. Now, I happen to think that germs are pretty cool. <laughs> but I'd understand if you think they're gross. After all, we go to great lengths to protect ourselves from those germs. We use antibacterial soaps and hand sanitizers and household cleaners and antibiotics. And those treatments do kill off the bad bacteria. But they also interfere with the good bacteria that we depend on every day for living. Some of these good bacteria associate with us and help protect us from infection and help us digest food. We call these associated microorganisms the human microbiome. The human microbiome can be defined as the collection of microorganisms that, more, microorganisms that live on us and in us. Some of these microorganisms are transient hitchhikers, others are lifelong inhabitants. And scientists are beginning to understand that these microorganisms have an important role in our human health and wellness. Now, you already know that we interact with microorganisms, good and bad. You know that we can spread a cold by touch or by coughing and sneezing. You know about bacteria in your mouth that cause cavities, and you know about bacteria on your skin that cause acne or body odor. But now, you have the choice to intentionally interact with good bacteria. You can go to the grocery store, and purchase foods that will aid in your digestion. You can go to the store and buy soaps that will promote a healthy skin microbiome. And you've probably purchased yogurt to help you recover from a bout of stomach flu. But how much do we really know about these microbial communities and our health? What's there? What are they doing? And can we change what's there? Can we change what's there and have a better way to deal with cavities and acne and digestion so, so we feel better and look better? Can we deal with what's there and change it to manage more critical health conditions like obesity, type 2 diabetes, irritable bowel syndrome, maybe even depression? After all, I believe we're all looking for better health, and we expect to live a longer life than our parents and grandparents. Wouldn't it be great to accomplish that naturally by using the very microorganisms that have evolved with us? <clears throat> Those of us that work at microbiologics are committed to a safer, healthier world. Are there any microbiologics people here? Every day we get the opportunity, every day we get the opportunity to interact with scientists studying infectious disease and using microorganisms to tackle some of our most difficult problems, including water quality, food safety, and drug-resistant organisms. <clears throat> These researchers come to us for microorganisms and services to aid in their study. And of all the studies that I get to support, in my opinion, the most interesting and promising studies are those related to the human microbiome. The hu human microbiome research is a global affair. The U.S. started funding research in 2007, and other countries have also initiated funded research programs. Together, scientists have done a lot uh, to advance our knowledge of the microbiome. <clears throat> they've developed new ways to sample the microbiome. They've developed new assays and new instrumentation to, to measure what's there. They've developed complex computer algor algorithms to deal with millions of data points. <clears throat> 
We now see universities establishing centers of excellence. Biotech companies have started up, and large pharmaceutical companies are advancing microbiome therapies through clinical trials. Yet, the genetics that make each one of us different and the complexity of the microbiome really complicates our understanding of what is normal or healthy and our ability to influence the microbiome to a desired endpoint remains unclear. So, what do we know? Well, we're a host, and we have a lot of microorganisms that live with us. And I like to think of us working together with those microorganisms as a type of superorganism. Recent estimates suggest that we may have as many microorganisms living on and in us as our own human cells. Yet, because these microorganisms are so small, they only make up 1 to 2% of our body mass. That means that each one of us is carrying around about a pound or two of bacteria. <laughs> Some of you may carry more. <laughs> now, those microorganisms have more than 3 million genes. Compare that to just the 23,000 genes in our own human genome. <clears throat> so, we are born... Uh, we, our microbiome is formed when we are born, and it develops rapidly over the first few years. We know that we have different organisms on different parts of our body. Different microorganisms live on our face, on our hands, and on our feet. We know the identity of some of these organisms, but not all, and some we're unable to culture in the lab. We know that organisms uh, differ between people, but there are similarities between you and your spouse and your immediate children, suggesting that contact and genetics has an influence. We know that our microbiome changes with diet, age, and physical activity. And scientists are beginning to understand that the function of the microbiome is less dependent upon which organisms are there, but what they do collectively with those three million genes. So as an example, let's talk about the most intensively studied part of the human microbiome, our gut microbiome. Microorganisms in our gut receive digested food from our stomach. Those microorganisms use those nutrients to grow, and as they grow, they produce small chemicals or metabolites like amino acids, vitamins, short-chain fatty acids, and even some neurochemicals. Our bodies receive these metabolites, some of which they use for energy, but others they use as signals for the rest of our body and to our brain. Our body also has a physical interaction with our gut microbiome. It's constantly sensing what's there and recognizing familiar microorganisms and identifying new ones. This physical interaction and these signals together form a type of feedback loop where this information is received and stimulates the metabolism and physiology and our, the immune system. Our body responds by promoting the growth of some organisms in the gut and reducing others. So you can imagine how certain lifestyle choices could change the composition of the microorganisms in your gut and have a ripple effect on your health. Let's consider a few examples. Exercise. We all know exercise is beneficial. But the gut microbiome is very different between active and sedentary individuals. Active individuals have a very diverse gut microbiome. They have an enrichment in bacteria that produce small metabolites that are related to improved cardiovascular health. They have a reduction in organisms that cause cellular inflammation. Diet. You are very much what you eat. We know that our diet can change the gut microbiome. A Western diet, that is a diet that's high in fat, high in sugar, and low in fiber, leads to a less diverse gut microbiome and an increase in organisms associated with cellular inflammation. 
a Mediterranean diet that is rich in fruits and nuts, vegetables, and some fish has a much more diverse gut microbiome and is also enriched for a number of organisms that produce small metabolites that are associated with improved mental wellness. Medications like antibiotics are often necessary to treat uh, infections. And while these antibiotics do kill off the bad bacteria, they also reduce the good bacteria in your gut. And studies show that following an antibiotic treatment, it may take your gut several weeks to rebound. But it does rebound, suggesting that it is resilient and programmed. Now, microbiome studies tend to be observational. Scientists compare groups of people, or they compare treatments, and look to see how the levels of microorganisms change. We recognize these types of studies as correlation and understand that they do not demonstrate cause and effect. Causation experiments are very difficult to do with people, so scientists often work with animals. And while we have specialized animal models like germ-free mice, where we can tightly control the experiment, animals are not people, and our ability to extrapolate and draw conclusions from these studies is very limited. So scientists continue to look at what's in the microbiome. They develop new methods, and new technologies. But they're trying to understand what should be there. Here they're using studies that, that use more and more people. Some studies are hundreds or even a thousand people. But what we'd really like to understand is how can we change what's there? And that's leading scientists to develop very novel therapies. So let's talk about how we can change what's in your gut microbiome. Prebiotic foods that are high in fiber are the best thing you can do to influence the growth of beneficial bacteria in your gut. Probiotics are live microorganisms that you ingest and temporarily increase the concentration in your gut. Examples here are yogurts, kombucha, and some of the freeze-dried pellets uh, and tablets that you can buy in the grocery store. Now, most probiotics are sold over the counter, and their production and performance is not reviewed by the Food and Drug Administration. Their quality and consistency can be, very, can be variable. And we often don't know which organisms are present, how many are present, and if they're even alive to function. This makes predicting the success of a probiotic very difficult. But perhaps one of the most interesting ways to influence our gut microbiome is the use of live biotherapeutic products. These are probiotic types of treatments that are intended for specific diseases. An example would be a Clostridium difficile or C. diff infection. Here, a bacterium has overgrown your gut, it's producing toxins and causing great damage to the, to the uh, gut lining. It's a serious life-threatening disease for immunocompromised individuals. Scientists have learned that if they transplant a healthy gut microbiome into a C. diff patient, they can, they can restore and protect that patient from, the, from C. diff. This type of treatment is also called fecal microbiome transplant. It's exactly what you think it is. <laughs> but it works really well because the patient's gut microbiome is very limited and readily colonized. These are fantastic times for microbiology. There are many, many advances uh, in, in using microorganisms that are going to lead us to a safer, healthier world. Our understanding and manipulation of the human microbiome has the opportunity to change our perspective on human health. But yet, as with any new technology, we must be guarded uh, and, and be aware of hype and unfounded claims, even if it comes with slick marketing. So as consumers, we should be curious, but maintain a healthy skepticism. Know 
that we continue to study what's in our microbiome and that we don't have a good understanding of what a healthy microbiome looks like and it's not clear how we can change it. I encourage you to educate yourself on what we know about the human microbiome. There's lots of information online. Talk to your doctor, talk to a dietitian. Chances are, they'll tell you, you already know two ways to, to give yourself a better gut microbiome. Diet and exercise. We don't have a magic microbiome pill that you can take and that lets you avoid the work. <laughs> now, if you're interested, I'd suggest you go ahead and have your gut microbiome profiled. There are a number of companies out there that do this, and their science is sound but know that the results you get back are a snapshot in time and that your gut microbiome changes constantly. And it may not be clear what to do, but who doesn't want to know more about themselves? <clears throat> now, I'd also encourage you to consider a probiotic or eat some high-quality yogurt, or better yet, make some homemade kombucha. It's fun, and you might like it. But regardless of what you choose to do, know that you and your microbiome have a close personal relationship. It's been with you since birth and is the result of choices you make every day. So we are well on our journey to, un, towards understanding ourselves as this super organism. The, the path for our journey may be long and may, uh, may have many twists and turns but I hope all of us are looking forward to what's around the next bend. Thank you.